Hi, welcome to Taste This TV. I'm Chef Joseph, and I have a great show for you here today. Talk about artfully presented food. Well, we're here at Fishtail by David Burke on 62nd Street in New York City, where we're going to try tuna tartare and some other favorites of the restaurant. All right, so now we're going to get started on some tartare. You know, and people should know this too, right? Because some people get a little intimidated by that when they hear tartare, right? So, well, steak tartare, people don't like to eat yeah. beef as much as raw fish because it's really a, really a seasoned version of sashimi or sushi. Yeah, yeah. But again, keep in mind, if you don't like raw fish, you can do these dishes with tuna salad. From exactly. Okay. If you're going to make tartare and you're going to buy shop for tartare, you know, buy a tail piece or, or scrap or belly pieces that are not necessarily the prime cut. This is a nice loin of tuna. Um, you know, so what we do is... I like this knife, it. Chef. What do you got going that's on here? Oh, no, that's my knife. Oh, no, that's a Jeff. This is my knife. This is my fish tail knife. It's fish, and it's healthy, and it's fresh. So anyway, you got your salmon. Put that in a small bowl. You got it. And your ingredients are in those ramekins there. See, the, the tuna ingredient... Actually, I'm going to switch bowls with yep. So we flavor it a little differently. The tuna, we flavor a little different than the salmon, because I think tuna... So you're gonna take that. This You're is a special kind of salmon, uh, salmon though, right? Isn't this is sockeye. Sockeye. This is, yeah. This is uh, coming out of Bristol Bay. Any good recipe. Right. There's certain things you put in, but again, it's, it's what you like. If you want ketchup and soy sauce in there, yeah. it's like chicken salad. You want raisins. There's so. no rules. No real rules. The classic is capers. Okay. And it's capers and lemon and, and mustard. Because years ago when you made it with beef, a lot of the beef wasn't as fresh. Right. Refrigeration. So you added a lot of and the capers will help really bring out that capers salty. Are, yeah, this is cilantro, some salt, shallots. So there's some raw onion in there. This is mustard oil also. A little heat. Nice. Almost like wasabi. Uh, and I added today a horse fresh. No. So and that's it. And then you add some uh, some olive oil. Oh, this is olive oil. Good amount of olive. You're gonna use you you have soy sauce. Right. Chili oil, chives, and scallions. Excellent. So we, we stay a little bit more, a little uh, a little more Asian on the tuna. And this is mustard oil, which I'm going to give you a shot of, too. This is one of our secret ingredients. Very spicy. Very nice. Uh, yeah, you can find it in Middle Eastern grocers. Oh, wow. Good stuff. Yeah, it's kind of wasabi-ish. And what was this again that I'm putting in? That's soy. Nice. So this is basically it. Now, again, this taco, and you can eat this on a cracker. This is a salad now. Yeah. Again, keep in mind you can make this with cooked salmon, cooked tuna, uh, barbecue chicken, et cetera. Real so easy, and people sometimes so get easy. intimidated by and, it. And you know, I mean, you really don't have to, stuff. for summer, you don't have to cook it. Yeah. So, you know, it's just. This is perfect for it. And this will last overnight, and it'll marinate. So you want to make it a couple hours ahead so it absorbs some of the flavors. Um, so we're going to. Yeah. That looks good. You got enough oil. And then, you know, you taste it, and then you can always adjust. Mustard oil is good. Yeah, barely good. But, but the bottom layer here is. Uh, and this is a dish we would see here at Fishtail, right? Uh, Fishtail or Townhouse. Okay. So this is, uh, you know, if you don't have a ring mold like this, you use a cookie that cutter. Mustard oil really comes yeah. out. So you pack this in. And, Almost uh, smells like wasabi. Yes, yeah, right? Yeah, it's very. The mustard root and wasabi root, are, I think, are very similar. So you pack this in a little bit. Yeah, exactly. So here's the salmon, layer two. And you can find uh, these molds you and can Tim find, any, yes. any specialty. And if not, you can put it in a, uh, serve it right in a a, uh, a nice wine glass or yeah. eat it out of there. Exactly. So, and Back this in is the old restaurant bit, days, the old PVC pipe worked pretty right, good. Right. <laughs> this is a little whipped cream or creme fraiche. This is, so we've got this part of it. Now here, this works. That is a little more mustard oil. Right. And I think that's horseradish cream. There you go. All right, then, so the easy part of this is, there you go. So wow, that, that's, that's beautiful. That's how, I mean, it looks it looks good. This is like the pastry nice. mind working as yeah, a yeah. pantry man. This so, is part uh, of the artistry. This is where yeah. it comes into play. And then again, you can add uh, a little more color here and, yep. and, you know, so that, see, so you can see the layers, a little, uh, little spoonful of caviar. Very nice. We serve this with toast. And again, you can make a bigger one also. Yeah. Take and grab a taco shell and just fill her up. That I'm talking about. Taco shell 
and for hors d'oeuvres, you, know, you can get taco shells all sizes. Now, do you feel the texture on this salmon is different from like a coho or something like that? Yeah, this is this is this is a little firm. This is really firm. and this when you got a tail piece, tail piece is always tighter because yeah. there's more muscle. That's where their that's where their motor is, you know. The frying's easy; it's the cutting them. Uh, he's got to mold them out. Yeah, you got to cut them, and then the scraps we give up. Obviously, we make uh, soup with the trimmings and uh, or staff chili kitties and all that kind of stuff. There. So you've got a couple tacos, and these are popular now because you know what? They're shareable. Yeah. They're light. They're easy, and people just love. Yeah, it's comfort food. And again, you can put the sky in. So there you go. Good minds think alike. See that? That's it. So that that's nice. the dish you get here. Uh, you can get a salmon, a tuna, and a crab meat on a menu. That's nice. And, or you can have all crab meat or all salmon. So. So Those are the, uh, this would be a typical uh, appetizer here. Typical appetizer here, also at uh, Daybrook Kitchen, which is in Saw. Which, uh, which we, we did, which was fabulous. Yes. Great. How were those, uh, was it snails on a log? Yeah, yeah, ants on a log. <laughs> so, Chef, what do we got going on here? Cra soft shell crabs. Yes. We, we spoke about that. Some, you either love them or you hate them. <laughs> I, I used to uh, crab a lot because I grew up near a couple lakes in Jersey. In order for a crab to grow, it outgrows its shell like a snake. It, it sheds its own skin, right. and then they have to go into hiding so nobody else eats them because they can't protect themselves. The first thing is you, you take the belly off. Or, right. right. Then uh, you got to cut off the eyes. Much easier to clean than the hard shells. Yeah, you cut the, you know. Basically, that's it. Oh, the lungs. You got to go underneath and get these things out. You know, they're just not that appetizing. Yeah. Just, you know, and when you... See, these are the lung sacs. Look at that. So then they're ready to go. Some chefs like to soak them in milk. Uh, some chefs don't. I like them crunchy. Right on a sandwich. People and I like them on a sandwich. And I like them grilled on salads. You gotta we're, love we're, doing a, we're doing an open face sandwich. There's another way. When you have lots of them in a the restaurant, sometimes we just we cut these off. Right. And we make french fries out of these, like shoestrings. Nice. So, so I'll take a couple of those so we can actually garnish with best part Sometimes. about these, I used to love how they come packaged individually in a little plastic. I don't know if they still yeah, do that. I don't see that anymore. Too much labor. Okay, yeah. so here's the crab. You're going to make tempura batter. Okay. Tempura batter is, you got all-purpose flour, yep. rice flour. Uh, we're going to add a little curry powder because we want a little unique flavor to this. Right. Um, and you need an egg. Now, some people only use egg white, but we're going to use the whole egg. And seltzer water because apparently the, I guess the bubbles help. Yeah. And in uh, Japanese culture, you can buy tempura flour. Hope I didn't add too much liquid. I got more flour here. Okay. Now, I've seen some people use ginger ale, but you can't leave it too long in the fryer. Oh yeah. It's sugar. Burn. Oh, it's got sugar in. Yeah. I think we're getting there. Use beer. Beer in your tempura. Beer? Yeah. Well, beer batter. Yeah. You can use beer batter. It's old fashioned. Yeah. It's good though. And we're gonna add all this chives. You gotta love that lemon zest. You know what? People forget about lemon zest. You know they shouldn't. I know. See that curry gives it a nice color. Yeah, I love it. Help it brown and the smell too. too. Yeah, gives it a nice nose on it. So we're gonna add these. Oh, here's one. Love that lemon. One crab. Another crab. A little more water. Just don't try to beat the crabs up too much. Yep. Uh, I love the smell already. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I got right. some... I think the lemon zest is underutilized a lot in cooking. Yeah. I hope Avocado fat... diced. Yeah, uh, slice. So we got we got a fryer that's pretty hot. Don't forget about all those little French fries here. I'll put them in after these are done. Tempura is a little messy. Yeah, but you know if what? It's so not is... messy, it don't taste so good. So is pancakes. Wow, you even smell that tempura coming up. Is that regular oil that you used? Or? That's canola. What we do need is we need plate. I'll use this. I'll take the bottom of this one. Put it on okay. Yeah, that's nice. Again, even with tempura, you can bake it. You don't have to fry tempura all the time. Bread. 
a little. You want to take care of that little Russian I dressing? Only? Okay. Yeah. Nice. Didn't you have something like this on your French fries in Bloomingdale's? Something like that? You had like a dipping sauce? Uh, we had a truffle French fry in there. Oh, yeah. That looks, looks good. A little tomato. Slice a little one of those. Yep. Okay. So. We want uh, red or yellow? Uh, you know what? One of each would be great. All right, cool. So the, these are fried. I'm going to take some of this stuff out. And some people, you know, they put these in the sushi rolls, all this extra crumbs. But I don't want to forget about these things. Nothing like tomatoes this time of the year. Yeah. Beautiful. And what kind of bread are you using here? This is brioche. Okay, and uh, that's good. So we got the fries in there, <clears throat> a little bit of bacon. Gotta have that bacon. Gotta put this over here. That, looks, that batter is amazing. Yeah, this is good stuff. A little bit of chili oil. A little lemon zest. And Beautiful so looking. You've got plate. avocado. You've got... Now, that's a real hearty lunch or dinner now, What inspires sandwich. your your color with your dishes? You know, all, all your dishes have a, a nice looking... I mean, it's kind of it's art. You know, you yeah. want it to look good. I mean, everyone knows how to make a BLT. So, yeah. avocado you add. And you know, you gotta start thinking of how you heighten flavors. How can I make my pancakes taste a little better? You know what? Right. You can add chocolate chips, you can add right. lemon, right. you can yeah, add a little bit of jam into the batter, or you can add tray pan. It's just a matter of thinking for a minute how you can get to the next yeah, flavor you gotta level. experiment. I think that's you know. when people kind of get a little intimidated. Great food, great presentation, but what I'm really bragging about now is this, uh, this drink called 12. Yeah. Designed that's by you. Designed by me. There's a, a white one, a red one. Right. New flavor coming out. 12 stands for noon to midnight. <clears throat> Alcohol-free, sparkling, all-natural beverage made from organic teas, Very nice. uh, fruit juices, and spices. So. Exactly. And, and, you know, it's not, it doesn't have an annoying after, aftertaste. Like, you get a hint of ginger at the end. And it's all-natural it. product. So it there's, there's nothing in there that's, that's going to stay. And, it, and it, it has a, a little bit of burn to it. It's got some spice in there, a little pepper, etc. So, you know, it's an enjoyable drink. The red one is more designed like a red wine, earthy notes. Yeah. Uh, it can be drank in cold or, or room temp. This one I prefer uh, cold. Yeah, this is a winner. This yep. is a good one. All right, let me try the salmon. Good. Wow. Fun. You're right, though. That mustard oil is where it's at. I, I recommend anybody go and run and get that. You can't get mustard oil. A little wasabi. A little yeah. mustard together. You know what's good about fried soft shells and mm. like fried chicken? Even at room temp, it's good. Yeah. That batter, though, was amazing. So important, especially little, with soft shells. A little hint of curry. You know, Americans, we always associate curry with stews. Mm -hmm. A little curry powder in, you know, pancake batter. Fried chicken, veal cutlet, chicken goes a long way. Of course, bacon you gotta have. Bacon. Yeah. I like this creative uh, serving tray here. This we had we had these made eight nine years ago. You know what? They cost a lot, but they never break. Yeah. You put them in the dishwasher. So this is usually eaten with a little toast. Yeah. Again, this is a just another way of presenting something very simple. Again, that mustard oil, I'm going I'm to be on that. Yeah. Chef, thanks for having me here. Appreciate it. Thank you. Well, that'll do it for today. Thank you for watching this fun-filled episode of Taste This TV. I'm Joe Simonero. Remember, there are no rules in cooking. Taste this.